There is a JavaScript library called Observable Plot, and it's made by the folks over at Observable, who are also known for making tools like D3. It's a great plotting library, and there is now also support for this in Python. And discussing the API of this is the goal of this video. So uh, just to give a few demos of what you can do with this tool, you've got very clean looking line charts that you get out of the box, but you can also do more fancy things like this point cloud together with a bit of a density around it. And to give an impression of how much you can actually customize if you wanted to, notice that you can also have these axes that are defined by the data. So instead of having an axis that just goes up here, the axis actually depends on the Y values as well. So you can see that the axis values, as well as these ticks and these lines, uh, they really are determined by the data as well. So there's fancy stuff that you could do here, but because there is now also a plugin called PyOpsPlot, you can also use this in Python notebooks, which includes Marimo. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this for your own projects if you're interested in having very clean looking charts. Now, before diving into the code, I figured it might be good to show you the final result is going to be, and it's going to look like this. It's a dashboard that I made for my solar panel data. It is going to make predictions about the kilowatt hours that I should be able to expect. So that's what you're looking at. And I've got some things on top over here, but the real thing I wanted to zoom in on are these two charts down below. These are two charts made with the PyOpsPlot library that I mentioned earlier. Now, one thing with these charts is that these charts are static. The library itself doesn't really give you anything to do something interactive. But what you still can do is just have a Marimo widget around, like in this particular case, I've got a slider over here that uh, tells me something about how I'm going to be uh, doing some smoothing over here on this chart. But this interaction comes from the fact that I'm redrawing the whole thing. And you can definitely be quite flexible inside of Marimo, but it is good to observe that this library itself is mainly designed to give you static charts that are meant to be rendered and just look really nice. And just to be clear, I've got this one chart over here that's a scatter chart, but there's a layer on top of it that's this moving window over time. And on this other side over here, I have got also a scatter chart, but here I'm showing predictions that are going in and real values that I'm supposed to be getting. And you can see there's kind of a distribution here. So there's a density chart around that as well. It's not just little dots. I've also taken the effort of doing a bit of a density chart here as well. So that's what we're gonna be building towards. Uh, let's now have a look at the code. There's a bunch of data frame stuff happening on top over here that's not too interesting. The thing that is of interest is what's happening in this panel over here. This is where I'm actually using this new plotting library and we can kind of dive a little bit into the API here. So what's happening here? Well, this library PyOpsPlot is doing its best to mimic the JavaScript API as much as it can. So if I were to take this line chart, for example, and if I were to go down, then here you can see the JavaScript API. The whole way it works is you call a plotting library, and then you pass a dictionary with lots of settings. And the whole point of the Python API is to try and mimic this as much as possible. Even though we are not doing anything in JavaScript, you can probably come up with a Python dictionary that internally can be translated into something that you see over here. And that is something that we can then plot inside of our notebook. So with that in mind, let's have a look. There's a couple of global settings for this first chart over here. You can see that I've got this grid and there's a height and there's some style properties as well. But the real meat of the chart is happening inside over here. Uh, that will be inside of this marks key over here. This is going to be a list and that list contains all the layers that you want to see plotted. As you might remember, the first chart that I showed was a scatter chart, but with a line on top of it that's kind of the moving average of sorts. How is that configured? Well, we'd have to pass a plot dot object. This is going to represent a scatter chart layer. We then have to give it a data frame. In this case, it's a Polar's data frame. And then we tell it how we'd like to plot things. This dot tells us the kind of chart or the kind of layer that we want. And then everything we pass in here tells us how to take the information from this data frame in order to generate this chart. So you can see, I can tell it what the X axis has to be and what the Y axis has to be. And note that date over here is a column name that appears in this data frame. And the same thing with this kilowatt hours. So if I were to just draw this, you would just see the scatter chart, but I'm also drawing a line on top of that. And the way that this line is defined is actually kind of interesting. So you still do the same pattern of, oh, the first argument is your data frame. But instead of then passing a dictionary that's supposed to pull properties out, you can also give it some sort of a layer that does a bit of an operation. And in this case, there's a window function that I would like to apply on the Y axis. So there's a specific plot object for that. There's an argument that this window object needs, which is this K value. That's how many days do I want to summarize with this moving window. And after that, I am telling it what of other values to go ahead and use from the original data frame over here. If you're used to Altair, then you might recognize a few things over here. 
But it's good to also take a step back and appreciate this is really a different API. We have one plot object, and inside of that plot object, we can add multiple layers on top of each other, which is different from how the Altair API does it. But there is still this notion of aesthetics that you want to encode that depend on the kind of chart that you're making. So in that sense, it's similar, but there are still a couple of differences. Below over here, I'm doing something super similar with that density chart. It's just that instead of having an extra layer over here that does smoothing, I've got this other layer over here that just shows me the density chart. And again, there's some opacity settings. And again, there's some things like color that I can go ahead and configure. Uh, I'm able to choose the steel blue color over here for the line, just to give an example. But if you run this, then you have these two uh, plot objects and these will just render nicely. So if I were to just copy this variable, start a new cell down below here and just uh, paste that in, you are gonna see just a very nice chart appear. And that's because under the hood, this is using any widget and any widgets are totally supported in this notebook environment. So that's all great. So in short summary, you now have an extra library at your disposal to make very clean looking dashboards inside of a remo. And I gotta say, I really like the way that these charts look, but there's this one extra thing that I might recommend you do if you're interested in doing this somewhat seriously. And that's related to dark mode. So there we are, everything's running in dark mode now. And I think it still looks pretty nice. But there's this one extra thing that you want to do here. If you look at my code, you will notice that I'm doing something extra at the bottom. And that is that I'm manually setting the background color here. The native background color that Observable Plot likes to use is just pitch black. But that's not the color that Marimo likes to use over here. So I've added a little bit of extra logic that says, hey, if from the metadata of what is currently running, we can infer that the theme is dark, then we're going to set this background color to this one background color that Marimo also uses. And otherwise, we're not gonna bother with any extra style settings. But by setting this, you can make sure that it just keeps on looking nice. And also a thing to keep in the back of your mind, if you're specifying colors over here for, let's say, these dots, then having a grayscale in mind could be great because they tend to look nice both in dark mode as well as in light mode. But yeah, um, if you're interested in this notebook, you can find the link in the show notes. But the main thing that I hope is that you might look at this and say, hey, yeah, this is a pretty neat plotting library. There's a nice Python plugin for it. Uh, and if you're interested in having really clean looking charts, you know, it's a cool library. <laughs>